Well, so much for global warming. Yeah, really, right? Yeah, it's not a thing. Okay, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Oh, I should be over here, I guess. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday. It means it's essential day. Oh, every day is essential, though, yeah. right? All right, so how's class been going for you guys so far? Really good. I'm really liking this class. Okay. It's a great class. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay, so, so far we've worked on four essentials. The four essentials that have to do with our body and our spirit, right? So we've worked on uh, the first essential, empty, lively, pushing up and energetic. You know, have you ever had to say that to somebody and ask them, what do you think that means? <laughs> okay, that's a no. All right. So so we know that empty, lively, pushing up and, and energetic. Hold your head up. Okay. Um, uh, yep, means what? Hold your head up. All right. And what else? Connection. 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 It's being connected, ready to respond. Um, empty, lively, pushing up. Okay. Awareness of surrounding. Okay, that's a good one, Miss Shelley. Elevate your spirit. Oh, keep, we must keep, elevate our spirit. And keep you know, our eyes uh, on the horizon. We, we like the, the word elevate. Yeah. We really, really like that word. Okay. Well, and keeping your eyes on the horizon, I think, kind of goes with elevating your spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like driving with your eyes closed, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. What else does the first essential have to do with? So we say. Intention. I'm, it, I'm sorry? Intention. Intention. Okay. I, so I we went know to that my book and read it. Our head is lifted. We know and that. The rest of our body are is suspended. Our waist is open and expanded, flexible. Okay. All right. And that we raise We're empty. Our... I'm sorry? We're empty. Like no perceived expectation. We're okay. Ready to we allow receive. ourselves to be present. Okay. Ready to receive. We are we are so ready to receive. Okay. Anything else? Well, the rest of our body is just suspended if our head is lifted. That is a very true statement, Miss Allison. Yep. When the head is lifted, everything else is suspended or hanging down. I I, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to. Okay. So anyway, so we know that empty, lively, pushing up an interjection has to do with keeping our head lifted. That allows the neck and the spine to straighten. We know that uh, it allows everything else to suspend and hang down. It, al it also helps the other essentials that have to do with um, the body. Um, uh, we should also feel, uh, and we need to raise our spirit, we should also feel yin and yang, right? Okay. Yeah. And we should also make sure that our belly is breathing freely, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, wouldn't you say that the yin and yang is that sense of connection? I mean, I was thinking of the connectedness, meaning like, you know, like the, the, the muscles and the nerves across your back connecting to your arm, each arm, you know, is, isn't that the same? Or is there, is it a broader concept? Well, you should feel, okay, so yin and yang is always present, okay? And with the first essential, we should feel lifting of the head and everything else drooping down. Right. So, so the, one of the examples I like to use is, um, uh, a hanger, a clothes hanger, you know how we we put our shirt on there, and so it provides a frame to hold the top part up, but everything else kind of just hangs down from the hanger. Okay, it's like that. Um, the head should feel connected to heaven. The feet should feel connected to earth. So, so when we talk about this type of connection. That mostly has to do with the third essential, uh, you know, holding in the chest and rounding the back. That has to do with the body shape. But to to answer your question, Marion, whenever you're doing Tai Chi, you should feel connected with yourself, for sure. 
Is it possible to be disconnected by basically having your lower body be too heavy? Oh, absolutely. We'll talk about that later today. Yeah, I was, yeah. last time we met, I noticed that my body, yeah, it was, it, it was actually hard to move the lower half because it was so heavy. Oh, yeah. That doesn't yes. mean it felt balanced, you know, it was like over uh, one way or the other, was it? It wasn't very flexible. Oh, and, and, you know, you're using some really good words, you know, balance, being agile, being flexible. Those mm -hmm. are, those are uh, words that, that go with Tai Chi. We must be those things. Right. So if your lower body is too heavy, then that's a problem. Well, I'll say it. that's a personal problem. Okay. All right. So we're clear with the first essential, right? Yeah. Okay. Second Mostly. essential, shoulders down, elbows down, kind of pretty much puts that into perspective, right? We know that when we apply the first essential, that the elbows and the shoulders will be down. Okay, because everything's suspending down from the head, correct? Right. Okay, so it helps to keep the chi down. It also helps to keep the upper body relaxed where there's no tension, okay? And, uh, you know, we know that when we raise our shoulders, then uh, it brings up our chi and then we lose flexibility. So we don't want that, okay? All right, third essential, hold in the chest, or we say sink the chest. Uh, or absorb the chest and round, uh, uh, and, or open the back. So sink the chest, uh, round the back. So what does that mean to you guys? Sink the chest, round the back. It means to expand the back. Okay. And to, um, again, going back to that connectivity thing, um, I mean, I, I think of it as a broadening of the back, but it's also a little bit, a little bit of a reach. Not too much, but a little bit. When your body gets shape. accustomed to that shape, it will not, it, it'll feel more natural. I'm sorry, what did you say, Shelly? I think that was me. me and it's a bow shape. I'm yeah. sorry? A bow shape. A bow shape, yes, that's right. Okay, Any, anything else? It connects the upper body. It does. Good job, Miss Shelly. That's the first thing it does, it connects the upper body. Um, and uh, it allows the middle body to be a little bit more flexible, right? Yep. Okay. And I just wanna like, just, okay. So when we talk about the upper body, we are referring to the shoulders and the back behind the shoulders, correct? Correct. Okay. So we want the chest slightly concaved in. When you have a chest that's slightly concaved in, it will round the back. It'll bring your, your shoulders forward a little bit so that right. you can have this shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what happens if you have too much? Then you're out of balance. Then what do you have to pay attention to? Your head drops. Okay. So what do I have to do then, Miss Shelley? Put your head back up. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so the first essential is vital. Keeping that head up. Because if, if we start changing our body shape, then the head is hard to, to keep it suspended up and straightening the spine and the neck, okay? How are we doing so far? Good. All right, last week we talked about relaxing the waist. Oh, okay. So this is, this to me is the juicy one uh, because, you know, uh, Hopefully in class, when your instructor tells you to use your waist, then you know what you should be doing, okay? So what does it mean to relax the waist? Breathe. Lower that, the lower back. I mean, let it flat, like let it fall a little, relax the lower back. Okay. One. I know it's not the waist, but it's part of it. At least I think of it that way. Okay. Make a slight oh, fold in your hips. Yes, we must make sure we have a slight fold in the hips. You have to be in your bubble. I'm sorry? You have to be in your bubble, what you, the way you stand. Okay, you must be in your bubble based on how you stand. Okay, yes. anything else? Tuck the tailbone a little bit. Okay. I guess your muscles are relaxed like everything else in your body, but they're they're 
their relax the waist, I think usually means to use the waist than to be breathing uh -huh. from your stomach, your abdomen. Okay. Would that be part of sinking your chi? Yeah. Yes. You know your chi is sinking when you can breathe freely from your belly. Yeah. Okay. So All when right. someone says relax the waist, they don't mean just don't use it. They mean use it in the Tai Chi manner. Use yes. it the same way you would use your neck. That's right. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. So the connection I want you guys to have uh, in looking at these first four essentials that have to do with the body and the spirit, we know that we need to keep the head lifted. When the head is lifted, then the shoulders and elbows will be down. When we sink our chest and round the back, we're able to relax our waist. So if you, if you don't apply one of these essentials, then, all, then, then, then it's going to uh, affect another one. So if, if I'm not able to keep my head lifted, then it's going to affect some of the other ones, like, you know, the ability to have my waist be relaxed, okay? So these body uh, essentials um, go together. So if you're not doing one, then it will affect others, okay? Are you guys with me? Yes. You, you get that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think about how that would look if you were, if one of those elements was out of whack, what would happen to the waist? Like, what would it be required to do? Okay. So say for instance, I, um, uh, I have my elbows and my shoulders up. Your waist has to work to support all of that. Well, okay. So now my upper body's heavy, my right. lower body's light. How's the breathing here? I was just going to say you can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're holding shallow, your breath. Right? Breath is stuck here. Okay. So, so yeah. if I don't keep my elbows and my shoulders down, it's hard for me to keep my chi down. It's hard for me to hold in my chest and, and round my back. If my shoulders are up, then it affects my waist and it affects my head. So if you break one of the four essentials, then it will affect the other three. So, so, so these kind of go together. Uh, however, the first essential, the, well, they're all really important. The first essential sets the tone. Yep. It's kind of like you have to have a key in order to start your car. You have to have a key in order to enter your house. If you don't have a key, then you can't get in. You can't start your car, you can't go anywhere, right? But with these essentials, our key is the first essential, our key is the second essential. You know what I mean? Yep. They all make yep. the car run. Yeah. So um, uh, now we're gonna get into uh, um, more about our mind and our energy, but these, these four specifically have to do with our body and our spirit. So you can do your Tai Chi like this. Or you can do your Tai Chi like this. <laughs> okay. Didn't I used to do it just like that? Well, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, Marion. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate but, you that. Know, I mean, we've all been there. Right. We've all been there. And uh, and the good news is, is that for most of you, you haven't been videotaped. Videotape yourself? No, really, seriously, this is a really good tool. If you yeah. videotape yourself, even in the group, you're only going to look at yourself, okay? And And you can see yourself, and you can then say to yourself, okay, well, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. Oh, my God, where are those essentials? Okay, it's a good teaching tool to yeah. educate yourself. So if I you're trying to do to that, do then, then uh, you know, uh, one, one time we were over at uh, uh, Master Yang's house. He was traveling, so Fang Lao was cooking for us. Anyway, 
for some reason, I don't know why, Michael put on a, my DVD, okay, of me doing something Tai Chi related. And she walked by and she says, oh, you know, when you record yourself, you can see everything you're doing wrong. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, and and uh, Tamara can attest to this. You know, I, I when I taught over at Shoreline Community College, I always recorded each group uh, on final day. We all did the form together. Um, and when they did their formal uh, uh, final, then we videotaped them as well. And we would give them the video so that uh, down the line, should they continue doing, you know, going on their Tai Chi journey, they should see how they've improved. So I would like thing. to admit that I never looked at it because uh -huh. uh, I remember when you when I was the last person to go and I stood up and had an adrenaline rush and I was shaking head to toe. So I, I <laughs> so so video, videotaping it brings a whole different dimension to Tai Chi. It does. <laughs> it really does. And and just think of all of us that that uh, submitted videos to the IJOC. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't had the nerve yet to videotape myself, but I'm planning to do it, you know. You know, you can do it and you don't, you know, it's kind of like um, when, when you want to go away yourself, make sure that the door is locked. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to see this. That's right, that's right. Okay. Nobody else has to see it. That's true. All right, anybody have any questions so far? All right, that's a no. Let's move on. Okay. So we're going to be addressing the, the, the rest of the essentials has to do with our mind and our energy. All right. Um, tai Chi boils down to energy. All right. Uh, so we're going to kind of take a look at that. All right. So we want our mind to be centered and stable. Uh, you know, that's why we, <clears throat> when we practice, we don't want to, we want always want to come from a place of, of being centered, being balanced so that we can respond one way or the other. So that's one of the, uh, the challenging things for me uh, when Master Yang shared this uh, with me, um, where you cannot show expression on your face. You have to come from a place of neutral because <coughs> there, are some, um, there, there are some movements, you know, like Wild Horse Parts of Maine that I find um, uh, that I really enjoy. So I had to not smile when I did it. You have to come from a place of being centered, okay? So we don't show happy, we don't show sad, we show neutral, <clears throat> all right? So we always wanna stay in the middle so we can make sure that we can go one direction or, or another, all right? Energy, we want our energy to adapt and to conform to whatever the situation. Um, there's, there's a couple of really good movies out there um, you know, Master Yang and I, we really like Jet Li movies. Uh, I've now really started enjoying uh, Donnie Yen's movie because I like Ip Man movies. But um, anyway, um, sorry. Yeah, I'll take it over there. Okay. Um, there's a good movie called uh, Fist, Fist of Legend. It's a movie about... Um, uh, Shotokan Karate, Master Funakoshi, uh, was had an encounter with Jet Li after his uh, master was uh, killed, um, and um, uh, so anyway, that's a good movie because it it talks about uh, being able to adapt. Um, so anyway, so we need to make sure that our energy can adapt and uh, uh, while applying Yin and Yang or soft and hard. Okay, so let me read you what it says here. What was Where that you... movie called? Fist of Legend. Of Legend, thank yeah. you. Anything Jet Li is wonderful, just saying. I've okay. watched the whole thing. All right, separate empty and full. In the art of Tai Chi Chuan, separating full and empty is the number one rule. If the whole body sits on the right leg, then the right leg is deemed full and the left leg empty. If the whole body sits on the left leg, 
then the left leg is deemed full and the right leg empty. Only after you are able to distinguish empty and full will turning movements be light, nimble, and almost without effort. If you cannot distinguish between empty and full, then your steps will be heavy and sluggish. You won't be able to stand stably, and it will be easy for an opponent to control you. Oh, okay. Hmm. Exactly, Marion. Hmm. Maybe that was. Well, I mean, that just makes me think about that, you know, because I thought I was being really good about the like the shifting of the weight and all that, but mostly I just felt really weighted down. Yeah. 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 Um, so we want our lower body heavy. Yeah. We want the middle body flexible. We want the upper body light. However, we must still maintain our agility with our lower body. So, so empty and full not only has to do with weight distribution, it's all about energy. Okay, you're gonna be hearing me say this a lot in our future meetings, okay? Energy. So uh, it has to do with balance, flexibility, agility, being able, uh, 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 being able to change very easily uh, we want to be able to move like a cat. We want to move like we are stepping out on ice and are unsure about how thick that ice is, if it's going to give way or not. Um, so we move with precision. Breathing affects our flexibility and agility. All right. So I want to give you guys an example. Um, let's have everybody stand up and I want you to do this exercise with me. All right, so everybody go into prepare. Hands at the bottom, almost at the bottom. All right, take a deep breath, a deep breath in and hold it. Now go to left ward off. Hold your breath. So, how is your balance? Go ahead and breathe now, okay? <coughs> how is your balance? How is your flexibility? How is your agility? Felt very stiff. Stiff. Okay. Non existence. I'm sorry, Miss Rebecca? Non existence, I said. Okay, non existent. Okay. All right. So, we know that breathing then has an effect on our flexibility and our agility. So if there's any time when you notice yourself holding your breath while trying to, while, while doing your Tai Chi form, you must breathe. You must breathe, okay? Um, so when our stomach gets tight, then we lose flexibility and agility. Um, okay, so here's another way to lose flexibility and agility, all right? Okay, so this time, uh, we're going to just keep breathing, all right? Uh, shoulders width apart, almost at the bottom. This time when you step out, I want you to step too far, too far forward, okay? I'm going to go this way. All right. Shifting left, turn right. When you step out for your uh, uh, bow stance, I want you to step far. Okay? All right. Now, relax your upper body. Shift your weight back on your uh, right leg or left leg, doesn't matter which one, okay? So that you're on your heel edge, your front heel edge. All right, without moving back, without pushing yourself back, just lift up that foot. Lift it up, <laughs> pushing back. Not if it John says a big no, right? Yeah, that's, that sucks. That, <laughs> that totally, totally. I see your broken bone. So we know that when we overextend ourselves, that we will lose our flexibility and agility as well. So, so if we, we know, sink too low, is it the same thing? If we sink too low, same situation? Well, let's try that, Marion. Because I think that's partly what I was trying to do when I was before. Okay, so here, bend your knees a little bit. All right, shift and turn. Shift, okay. 
So now you're kind of low. All right, now overreach your step. All right, now don't put weight on it yet. Lift up your foot. Without pushing back, can you still lift up your foot? No. That would be a no. So going too low is also a problem. I'm sorry? Going too low with your stance can be an issue. It can be an issue if you're not able to separate empty and full. Right. Yeah, because Master Young goes really low and very impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we won't talk about a snake creeps down posture. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but he's but... he's strong. He's very strong and very yeah. balanced, unlike me. So trying to become strong, I mean, I'm trying to become stronger by lowering into my stances, right? I'm trying to develop those stronger legs. But like I said, you know, I felt like that one time, I, I felt like I kind of wasn't moving all that well. Yes. So if your lower body is too heavy and you cannot easily move your feet, you are what's considered double weighted. And when you're double weighted, this is one of the dangerous times in martial arts. Right. Because that means then at that split second, whoever's in front of you has the advantage. And, mm -hmm. and if you can uh, uh, move like a cat with precision, with agility, with flexibility while breathing, then, uh, you, you know, this is where we want to be. So holding our breath affects our flexibility and our agility. Right. Stepping too long affects it as well. So our empty and full must be clear. All right. So, so we say, um, so if you stand with your, your, uh, knees, you know, straight and you step out, if you do a normal step, you'll, you'll, your body will tell you how far forward you can go. Now, if you sink a little bit, you can extend a little bit more. If you sink a little bit more, you can extend a little bit more, but you still need to be able to do this. Right. Um, then you know that you are agile, but the moment you step a little bit too far and you cannot easily pick up that front foot, you are double weighted. You've now broken the separate empty and full essential and, and it makes the masters in heaven sad. Okay. You might tumble. So the con one of the concepts then, the early concepts about being flexible and agile are, I mean, they tie into everything too. However you're using your limbs, that's the number one thing they must be able to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you, if your feet are in quicksand, mm -hmm. you cannot move. Right. Freely. Right. Okay. Um, so we want you to be able to move freely uh, uh, without um, without becoming double weighted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Check. <laughs> All right. So we know that holding the breath makes us uh, uh, lose empty and full. Uh, we know that stepping out our empty and full is not clear. Um, so, uh, you know, most people, uh, tend to focus on the physical part. Um, uh, but there's also the energy part. So here I'm going to need to, to maybe borrow Michael. Yay. Michael's coming. Michael's coming. All right. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of push hands. Okay. So this is where the energy part comes in. Um, in push hands, uh, there are, uh, four requirements. We must connect, we must follow, we must adhere, uh, 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 okay, hold on. We, uh, we must connect, stick, we follow, stick. We must adhere and stick. Thank you so much, Miss Dee. Dee. What are <laughs> I lost my words for a minute. What is it? What are they again? Stick and adhere. Connect and follow. Connect and follow. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so we say learning the, the hand form teaches you all about yourself. 
And when you know about yourself, then you can know about other people, opponents, okay? So, so when we do push hands, we can, we can kind of tell when you're empty and full is not clear. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so, so uh, when we do this push hands, all right, and say, for instance, I start to hold my breath. And if Michael does something to me, push, okay, then I become a little bit more stiffer and I'm going to lose my balance, all right? Or let's say uh, if he goes to do an application on me, let's say like a ward off, okay, like a ward off, and if, and if I'm too stiff, I'm going to go, all right? So we must make sure that when we, when we do these things, okay, uh, let's go to ward off, okay, that... Okay, so, you know, that, that we still are flexible and are agile. Right. Uh, because the moment we become stiff, the moment we become stiff, then we become breakable. Okay. Right. So, right. so we need to make sure that we maintain our agility and our balance, okay, so that, so that when an application comes, then we are able to, <laughs> okay, um, uh, uh, adapt to it, to conform to whatever energy is coming at us, all right? So um, uh, this is the push hands part. Uh, and I know some of you have not had an opportunity to do push hands. Um, and we're trying to figure out how we can we can uh, do this uh, on Zoom. Uh, so <laughs> we're still trying to work that out because it requires a partner, OK? Yeah. Well, I could get a partner, but I don't know the moves. Yeah, so I mean, you know, uh, if you have somebody in your household that is willing to, or, or even outside your uh, home, you know, whatever, whatever, uh, that you can find as a partner, then we would be able to do some things, but it, it requires a partner. Um, so, uh, so we have to make sure that we, we become soft and that we yield to our opponent. So, um, oh, let me, I have to have Michael back again. Michael, can you come back? Um, so we, we have to yield. So the first thing in push hands that we have to do is we first have to connect. Then we have to follow. Then we stick and we adhere. All right. So um, so we, we need to make it so that they cannot find our center. All right. So, so let, for instance, when, if Michael goes to push towards me, okay, see how I just kind of absorb a little bit here? All right. Now he can continue pushing, all right, and then I can I can go back or whatever, or I can or I can do something back to him. Um, but the first thing we have to do is we have to yield, all right. That's why sometimes um, uh, for people, if if a man grabs your or, or okay, if a person grabs your wrist and they pull, the natural instinct to do is this. I don't want I don't want you to pull. I, I'm going to pull back, right? right? But we know in Tai Chi, if they pull, we go with them. Then at that time we can come back, okay? Um, but we must go with them first. That's a trained behavior, okay? Because we are we are so accustomed to if somebody goes to push towards us. We, we no, don't push me, don't push me. I become very stiff. So then he can push me. He can easily push me. I can easily become off center. All right. So, so um, well, in those moments, you come down to brute, it comes down to brute force and weight. And Tai Chi is not just about brute force. And weight. Tai Chi is not about brute force. Yeah. yeah. At all. Yeah. Uh, tai Chi is about uh, body mechanics, body physics. Right. And, and how uh, we um, respond to somebody putting force against us. So, so, you know, these essentials help this, the essentials help. So, you know, here, okay. I'm absorbing here. I'm absorbing. Then I can do something to him. All right. If need be, but we first need to absorb it. We need to follow it. We need to, we need to have a connection with somebody. So like standing like this, I have no effect over his body. 
But once I can touch his body and I can do something to him, then once he responds, he can do something back to me now. Okay? So this is the energy part. Uh, are you guys with me? Yeah? Mm. So is push hands used as a way to help us understand our energy? Absolutely. And okay. Absolutely. And that's um, the purpose yeah. of it primarily. Yes. And and when you learn push hands, thank you, Michael. When you learn push hands, then you start to understand yourself in a different way. Um, you start to understand um, and and can apply uh, the energies uh, with with a lot of practice. So, um, uh, you know, just like learning the hand form takes a lot of mind, takes a lot of, you know, paying attention to details where your feet are, uh, this and that. And then um, uh, now, but now you're working with somebody with push hands. So, uh, so how we're going to approach this is I want you to start thinking about your physical body. Um, and, um, you know, is your bow stance too long? Are you becoming double weighted? Uh, this is really, really important. Um, have you lost your body shape? Um, there's things that I want you to think about that have to do with empty and full that uh, I want you to start to think about, okay? Um, uh, weight shifting, okay? This is a question that um, uh, I've, I, I've put out to Master Yang, and um, uh, the middle of this month, uh, we're going to have another uh, director and instructor uh, meeting. Uh, where he's going to, you know, answer some questions. And so my question that I want to make sure that everybody hears him say, uh, the directors and instructors, is has to do with weight shifting. This is the, the story about empty and full, all right? Sometimes when I've done um, rankings or, uh, you know, even doing evaluating people for the IJOC or, you know, just seeing people, uh, you know, teaching online and things like that. One of the things that is not clear uh, or they may have a misunderstanding about has to do with weight shift, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, Bella. You wanna play with mama? Okay. Aww. All right, so I'm gonna go into a bow stance. I'm gonna do a, a knee brush, all right? And, and maybe I'll go this direction so you can see. All right. So this is what I noticed some people doing with their weight shifting. Could you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. let, me yeah. Show it to you. let me show it to you this way. All right. Here's the weight shift. They tipped back. Yeah. Right. All right. Do you do that? No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you stamped that out of me. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. So what was I doing that's not right? You were leaning back to your left, to the back leg and the side for one. Okay. Anything else? It's you would be able to move your weight forward instead of moving, making it a flow and continuous. <laughs> yes. So my question to you then is, uh, and this is how I always follow up uh, when somebody answers the question is, do you walk like this? <laughs> do you walk like that, Chiche? No, he's saying no. Oh, drunk. No. So how do we walk? Just like John said, you know, we put our heel edge down, then we move, we move, we move, we move, we move, we move right? Right. Okay, are you doing that in your Tai Chi? Not all or are you holding your weight back? If you're holding your weight back, your empty and full is not clear. All right, okay, so here's an example. I found this the other day because I'm clearing out some of the things. Okay, everybody knows what this is? Okay. Slinky. Do you guys remember the song? It plays in your head, right? Okay, all right, so, so here it's, it's, let's say it's even, it's neutral. 
But if I, if I want it to go more to one side and the other side, it all moves together, right? Right. Okay. Yes, Chichen, that's right. Okay. Um, so I don't want you to hold your weight back because then your, your emptying pool is not clear. You're uh, affecting your uh, agility, your flexibility, uh, and 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 uh, 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 and that will not be good if you're in front of somebody, you know, like an opponent. So if you were holding your weight back, say in, uh, well, just you know, brush knee and push, for example, um, you might find yourself doing that because you. Um, are stepping too far back or you're you're reaching with your shoulders and not your waist you're not sending your your weight you know like in the center of your body for example well what happens if the empty and full is not clear then it's more of i'm going to hold my weight here even as i put my foot down then all of a sudden i'm going to motion forward right right okay um that's holding your weight back Right. That's like that's like taking a breath and holding it, and then finally letting it out and being able to breathe freely. So we want to be like the hose, where we turn the water on after we've crimped it off and some's dribbling down a little bit. We want to be able to have that flowing, okay, uh, where it's not being restricted. I find it a bit of a challenge with repulsing monkeys to keep my weight centered to be you know like the folding forward because that was something i've learned more recently like trying to keep that actually folded all the way i'm moving back i i accomplish it but i don't actually feel that comfortable in parts of my body doing it and i think it's a, a weight a balancing shift it makes me nervous yes and how often do you walk backwards marion not often <laughs> all right so that's another issue yeah is that you know we have movements in the form where we step backwards right. and we don't necessarily do that very often in life right right um, so we have to be, make sure that our footwork is clear our spacing between our feet is clear um our weight shifting is clear our you know our we're, we're still doing the four uh, body essentials you know right. now we're getting more into you know uh mind and and and, and energy here so you know, we have to be clear about all these different things. You know, to, to do it at one, at a given time uh, is is really a challenge. Wow. Even uh, even going backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, so yeah, you know, take a look at movements that you're either holding your breath, that you're overextending your footwork, um, and um, uh, you know, where you're kind of losing agility. <coughs> okay. So, uh, anybody have any questions about this? Pretty simple, right? <laughs> <laughs> Only sounds that way. Yeah, you know. Well, so going back to our mind, because most of what we've been talking about is energy, right? Yes. So going back to our mind, coming from a place of being centered and basically being ready to respond to anything, being receptive. Is there, I mean, is there some other way when I, I experience some of that, you know, when I do some of my practices and I essentially am, um, uh, I'm, I'm almost objective about what I'm doing. It's, you know, I'm just letting my body go ahead and follow along and do what it needs to do. And I'm just keeping watch over it. You know, basically, kind of like, I don't know if that's a any kind of way to look at it. Yes, you must stay in the middle. Yeah. You must stay centered. If you have moments where you're feeling happy, moments when you're feeling confused, moment when you you're, may feel unsure, then you're not in the middle. You've drifted a little bit to one side or the other. So, um, uh, you know, that will affect our mind. Um, uh, that will affect how our body responds to our mind because everything starts with the mind. So let's say you're learning the form still and everything is not rock solid mm -hmm. and you're trying to be neutral 
and you come upon some position that you maybe you're not really good about, should you just try to let it go and just do the best you can and move on and try not to think about that particular element? It depends on what intention you have set up for your practice. Right. If you want to practice for the sake of practicing, you just do that and overlook whatever mistakes. Just do it for the joy of doing it. Right. Um, you know, when's the last time you did that? Right. That you just practice just to just feel the experience and just know that you're just doing this Tai Chi thing and it just feels so great. Well, without showing emotion, right? Right. Okay. So then there are times when we are going through the form and we are trying to be very aware of where, what movements do I need to work on? Uh, to me, that's like the word in the book. And the word in the book is if you come, if you read a book and you come across a word that you don't understand and you go beyond that word, then you're stuck basically <laughs> at that point. All right. That doesn't mean that you're not understanding everything else that's going on, but you're limited because you don't understand this one word. Right. So, so you must be clear. And, and so there are times when it's very important for you to do single movement practice, because when you do single movement practice, then not only can you uh, really get a grasp of what it is that you're doing in a particular movement, but you can also uh, you know, do it faster, do it slower, so that you can then uh, uh, feel the energy. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I cannot speak highly enough about single movement practice. That's really important for those that want to take that journey. Um, so, you know, it, it just really depends. If, if you are, um, you know, really wanting to pay attention and make sure that, you know, your form is and each movement in the form is more standardized than it is today, then you must, must pay attention. Yeah. And it's also good to get feedback. It's also good to videotape yourself because then that's really good feedback, right? Um, and, and know that, you know, no one else has to have access to that video uh, unless you want to share it. Unless um, they but, bring it out when the family's over. <laughs> well, you know, that's just it, you know? And, and you can do that. Right. And, and you know what? They probably won't even care. They probably won't even know unless you point things out. Right. right? Well, unless you fall, it's like, oh, well, are you supposed to do that with Tai Chi? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, anybody have any questions? So in the single form practice, sometimes, you know, let's say left ward off when I'm going here, then I seem to lose the energy connection with my right hand to my left hand. So should, is that okay? Or should I, because I'm thinking, oh, to reach out to the opponent, or should I try and keep that energy connection between my right and my, you know, left here, down here, or should I, I feel myself sometimes expanding too much. And okay. is that, and should I try to re bring it back then and be connected, I guess? Um, Is okay. that a weird question? I don't know. No, it's not a weird question. Um, actually, I think you answered your own question. Uh, and that is, um, we, we must look at our body shape and we need to make sure that we're following the first four essentials that has to do with body and spirit. Now, is your body shape right? If you're connected with yourself, you should feel this connection. If you've yeah. lost connection, then you have to revisit that. You have okay. to revisit where is it that there's this disconnect? Because if there's a disconnect, then something is not right. Okay. Thank right? you. So, yeah. so if you're doing a movement in the form where you feel one part is, is like really empty and the other part is really, really full, then it's not balanced. So remember, yin and yang is always in the house. Okay. Um, and, and know that <laughs> we always want to come from a place of uh, uh, being centered, being stable, um, you know, while doing all these essentials and ensuring that we have uh, the right body shape. This connection is really vital to what it is that we're doing. So if you're in left ward off, 
you should feel this. If you're not, then you've lost connection with your upper body. And that's, that's kind of normal because for the most part, when people come to uh, learn Tai Chi, they, they, most people do not have a, a connection with their upper body to themselves. We weren't, we weren't ever taught that. Just like we weren't, you know, uh, us women, we were never taught to have our feet shoulders width apart. This is a learned behavior. This is something that we have to really pay attention to when we start learning Tai Chi because we, we have been walking around this earth you know, for a short period of time where we've been holding and doing stuff with our body and not even being aware. So Tai Chi makes us uh, be, be cognizant of what it is that we're doing at any given time with our body. Um, well, back to John's comment. Um, so I guess what I understand about trying to say practice is not necessarily that if something doesn't feel right, I'm doing it wrong. But the first thing I should do is look at, is everything in balance? Yes. And then you look at the parts of the form, like whatever, I'm holding my hand the wrong way or something. Yes. And you can go through these essentials, you know, okay. uh, and repulse the monkey. Am I keeping my head up? Yeah. No. Um, uh, you know, it, it, am I keeping... A am I keeping my, my elbows and my shoulders down? Okay. This time. I mean, you can go through these, these right. essentials and see if you are applying them or not. Uh, if you're breaking them, then it will affect all the other movements. Right. Yeah. So good question, John. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? All right. That's a no. All right, so I want us to practice. Uh, let's go up to, um, actually, let's take it up to single whip today. And um, what I want you to pay attention to is your footwork. Okay, initially we want to work on footwork. Are you stepping too far? Are you stepping too shallow? Or are you stepping just right? Okay, all right, so let's start from here, almost at the bottom. All right, let's go to ward off left, shift left, turn right. Now, when you step out, okay, can you easily pick up this foot? If you can, then go ahead and proceed. If not, try it again, okay? All right, let's go to right ward off, back, turn, shift to the left, rotate, grabbing and pulling, Closing the arms and step, all right? Now, can you pick up this foot? Or do you have to move your weight back to pick up that foot? If it's just move right, then move weight forward. Turn. Now shift back. Turn back. Press forward. Separate your arms. Shift back. Shift forward. Okay, single whip, back, turn, back, make your hook hand, stepping out, can you bring that foot back, or, or are you double weighted, if it's just right, then move, okay, so was everybody stepping out okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now let me ask you this. How was your breathing? I was holding my breath. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember breathing at all. <laughs> all right. So we know that breathing is going to affect our flexibility and agility, right? Right. So now we're going to try mm -hmm. it again. And this time we're going to watch our breathing. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah. Ready? Ward off left. Keep breathing. How are you stepping? Go. Keep breathing. Back and turn. Rotate. Step. Ward off right. Breathe in. Breathe out as you turn. Press. Breathe in. Press forward. Breathe out. Push. 
Breathing in as you shift back and breathe out as you shift forward. All right, single whip, keep breathing. Breathing in and out when you need to. Go to single whip. How's that, Marion? It was easier. I felt like I had more flow. Easier. Actually. It was, I felt lighter. Oh my gosh. Okay. My upper body felt a little lighter. I felt more nimble. It wasn't like okay. I couldn't move before, but you know, this was better. Okay. All right. How's everybody doing? Okay. All right. Now what I want us to pay attention to is how are we shifting our weight? Are you holding your weight back? Are you, are you waiting until your whole foot gets on the floor until you flop forward? Or are you continually moving weight, moving weight, moving weight until you're in your bow stance? All right. Yes. Like that, Miss Shelley. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So we're going to try this now, making sure that our weight shift is right. Okay. From here, almost at the bottom. All right. Shifting to the left, turning to the right, shift to the right, right leg gets full, left foot gets empty, step out. Now move, 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 move until you get in your bow stance. Back, come to the middle, turn, keep breathing, rotate. Arms closed, step. Now move, keep moving, keep moving until you finish. Turn, breathing in. Turn back, breathe out. Press, breathing in. Expand out. Separate your arms for push as you breathe in, shifting back and push. Shift forward and breathe out. Single whip, back and turn. Keep breathing. Back. Make your hook hand. Step. Move, move, move. Keep shifting your weight. Yes? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You think well, so? It was hard. I know I noticed that I have a bad habit already when I do I just want to put all my weight over here because I was thinking full and it's full with 60, 40. Yes. So, so what you need to do, Miss Veronica is, um, at fill two glasses halfway with water and put a little bit more in the other glass. And then you can yeah. decide if you want to give the emptier glass to yourself or to your, to whoever else is having dinner with you. Got it. You know, this is one of the things that uh, uh, sometimes people uh, misunderstand because when we say empty and full, then they think, okay, well, this, this is empty and full because my leg, I'm standing 100% here. This is my full leg, okay? Um, uh, or when I'm in an empty stance, I'm just going to basically touch the floor with my heel, but not really put any weight on it because this is empty. <clears throat> That's uh, really, it's really hard to, to get that. It's hard for me to get that concept to like put some weight into it and not just have a touching. Uh huh. Okay. I'm going to give you an experiment to do in a minute. Uh, okay. So master young will say, uh, Empty has full, full has empty. So somebody asked in class one time, when we're doing our Tai Chi, should our mouth be open or closed? His oh. answer? Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Is yes. Because empty, you know, closed also includes open. Open includes closed. So we have to have determine which one is emptier and which one is fuller, but we don't ever go completely empty. So that concept about the 60, 40 or the 70, 30 or whatever, it's not so much about percentages of weight. Uh, I mean, that's a guide, but it's really just about what do you need to do to keep your body nimble and balanced? Sure. Yeah. And you'll notice that most of, 
Uh, the empty stances are uh, have to do with uh, more like split energy. Yeah. Kind of kind of things. But here's an experiment. Uh, go in your bathroom where your scale is. Lock the door. Okay. And I want you to go into an empty stance. Put your forward foot on that that scale. It's going to give you a number. Then step on the scale. That's going to give you a number. So if you weigh 100 pounds, the first number should be 30. And what, what people find is that they're not giving enough. What you think is, is empty or the 30% is really shy of 30%. So it's an experiment you can do. Uh, again, just make sure the door's locked if you care, okay? So the things I want you to remember with this essential uh, has to do with breathing because breathing affects our agility and our flexibility. Uh, uh, you know, so we don't want to hold our breath. We want to make sure that our, we're breathing. Okay, good. Uh, we don't want to step too far forward. We don't want to be too shallow. We want to be just right. Just like the blonde haired Goldilocks girl. Okay. Make sure that you're, when you step, when you step out, that you're able to pick up this foot. Because if we are stepping on ice, we don't know if that's going to give or not. So we move slowly, OK? Um, make sure your knees are aligned with your feet. This is another vital thing, especially in ward off left. Sometimes everything is right. But then when we go do this, then we get this misalignment, all right? So, so pay attention to your alignment with your legs, with your feet and your knees, okay? Uh, body shape. Uh, don't have your knees go past your toes. Is your weight distributed correctly? Uh, and are you stepping without becoming double weighted? Okay? That's your job this week is to pay attention to your empty and full. Uh, and we're kind of looking at the physicality of things, but also know that when you hold your breath, you're affecting your chi, your energy, all right? So it also has to do with energy. When you are double weighted, it affects your energy, all right? Anybody have any questions? Oh, that's a no. Okay, we'll go ahead and close class. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, we are now getting into um, the main entree. Okay, we got our appetizers and stuff, you know. Uh, now we're getting into the main, main stuff. Uh, and uh, so um, if you have any questions throughout the week, uh, please feel free to email us uh, and we will reply uh, as soon as we can, okay? All right, everybody have a fabulous week. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carol, be careful of your knee. Oh, I got good news. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry. I was in the middle of doing dinner and stuff. No surgery needed. Physical therapy for like a couple of months, probably. So the full fissures aren't full fissures. It's still meshed together, so it should scar over. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, that's fabulous news. Yeah, I'm oh. really, really happy right now. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah, whenever they say you don't need surgery, it's like, oh, hallelujah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> precisely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. So oh, I can keep sure. training. I just have to go to physical therapy a couple times a week, and hopefully they can get me back because I still can't do yoga. So. Uh-huh. Okay. Alignment. Key. Alignment. Alignment. <laughs> no, I've healed other people's bodies. I was hoping mine would heal itself. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. But you know, one of the things I find as a teacher, when I show people how to not do things, that hurts my body. Yeah, like, I know. Like, and I was worried do, about that tomorrow. Like, don't do this, right? And it's like, oh gosh, you know, now, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you pay for it. We do. So diagonal flying should be fun tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Kelly should be there. So if you need help, let her know. I will. Thank you so <laughs> much. All right. Okay, good. Let's go celebrate. Oh.
<laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's making great. sure you can't be. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. All right. Take care. See ya. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.